Hey you guys, Mr. Delcor back again for some more remote learning. We're going to kind of continue our look today at modern uh, harvest uh, harvest methods here today, uh, but we're going to take kind of a different twist on it. Rather than looking at the equipment and the operation style, uh, we're going to take a look at kind of the harvest styles that we do, some of the, some of the harvest methods that foresters are prescribing all over the state, uh, and we're going to think about advantages and disadvantages of each, and it gets really interesting. <clears throat> when you when you, I'm by no means an expert on this stuff, but have a, as you become uh, a little more familiar with harvest methods, it's really interesting to drive around the state and and check out all these different cuts going on and start to think about why maybe foresters are making the decisions they are. And as somebody who loves wildlife habitat management, I certainly have an appreciation for the types of habitat that each of these harvest methods we're going to talk about today can have. Some of them can create some absolutely beautiful habitat uh, and really enhance. Uh, wildlife down the road. Um, so there's a lot that goes into selecting the right harvest method. Um, there's a ton of variables that need to be taken into into uh, account. Number one being forest type. What, what types of trees are we harvesting here? Are we in a coniferous forest, a deciduous forest mix? What, what, what's the end goal here? What's the harvest goal, as I say down there? Soil type's pretty important. Is it really wet in there? Is it well-drained? Is it nice, firm soil? What kind of equipment can we use? Um, and then what type of wildlife habitat are we going to create and or destroy because we're going to change things, right? We're, we're causing disturbance when we go into the forest. We're, we're kind of setting that ecological succession clock back. Um, so there will be some habitat destruction, but there could be some habitat creation as well down the road. And some of these harvests can look just horrible, you know, a year or two out, but you come back five or six years later, 10 years later, and there is some beautiful habitat for some early successional species in there. So let's jump right in. We're going to talk about, I think, five or six different uh, harvest types here today. Um, and then we're going to do a little bit of assignment together. Um, it's kind of a fun one that I usually like to really do in class with you guys, uh, but we can get it done here today. The first of which is an easy one, the clear cut. And it makes sense in, in the name of clear cut, all the trees are removed. We literally cut every single tree. And here's a good aerial image of a, of a clear cut here, a fresh one. Um, you can see bare soil there. We have removed every single tree from that site. Uh, there's some advantages. You can quickly remove an unhealthy forest. There's some bugs in Northern Maine, the spruce budworm uh, that, you know, foresters will select a clear cut just to cut every spruce and fir tree off the side of a mountain so that the spruce budworm doesn't come in and wipe them out. Uh, and we can, once we've cleared everything out, a forester can decide exactly what species to replant there and you can kind of micromanage a forest. If I look right here, that is a planted clear cut. That's an older clear cut, sticks out like a sore thumb that's been planted to probably some sort of spruce or fir. And that's you know very common in, in uh, paper company land where they're trying to grow softwood trees to produce uh, paper. Uh, it creates great habitat for early successional species. Man, up north, uh, those moose and rough grouse and snowshoe hare, they love old clear cuts. Maybe, you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the road as those uh, young trees are coming up. It is a smorgasbord for the moose and it provides great cover um, for uh, creatures like rough grouse and snowshoe hare and all kinds of other birds that require early successional habitat. Now, disadvantages, it can be really unappealing in the short term, right? People drive by, they see a clear cut and they go, oh my goodness, they cut down all the trees over there. That is just awful. Um, when, in, you know, trees grow back and uh, it takes a while, but uh, it can create some great habitat too. Another disadvantage is that there's a long, long time before you're getting any money out of that woodlot again. If your goal is to make money off your land and trees, if you clear cut it, it's a one-time deal. You're not making money off the lumber from your land for a long, long time after that. And we also want to worry about erosion a little bit. We think about you know, how much bare soil is showing there. Uh, we can cause uh, a lot of erosion uh, if we don't do that right as well. So there's your clear cut. We'll find some of those up north here in a little bit when we go to Google Earth. This is a really interesting one, the shelter wood harvest. In a shelter wood harvest, we're going to harvest you know, mature trees uh, in two to three entries over you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so they'll go in, they'll thin out some of that overstory, but they'll leave a lot of trees. That image is a great example of a, of a, of a shelter wood harvest where to me it always looks like woods that have just been thinned just a little bit, like a sugar bush we talked about uh, when you're tapping maple syrup would look often like that. The understory's been removed, some of the larger trees in the canopy have been removed. Um, 
but it's going to it's going to allow natural regeneration of shade tolerant species so you're going to get pines and other shade tolerant trees that grow really beautifully in the shade underneath those big tall trees and you can allow that to happen for 10 or 15 years let those pines underneath get there get a little bigger and then come in and remove the rest of the overstory and release those pines to really grow well um, it creates early successional habitat a lot like a clear cut underneath there with that thick stuff that comes up uh, some disadvantages though we need to build more roads we're, and, and we're going to disturb it more often right so the more you come in there with heavy equipment the more damage you do to the soil the more disturbance there is um, and the more damage you can end up doing by going in more more often than you maybe would have to if you did another method but shelter wood's really interesting um, and yeah so shelter wood is a good one i find those up north uh, in the areas that i deer hunt a little bit i'll end up walking around in some shelter wood harvests every now and then and there was one that we used to hunt in a lot that was some great deer hunting for a while and uh, i realized it was a shelter wood harvest about five or six years ago because all the young pines that were you know waist high when i was in high school were all of a sudden 15 feet high and it hit me then that they were coming back to harvest the rest of the big pine trees pretty soon and sure enough the next year the whole thing got uh, harvested again and all the larger trees were removed uh, and it'll be a while before we're hunting in that spot again but uh, that is the natural cycle of the disturbance in the in the industrial forest up north um, a seed tree harvest is really interesting this one has quite a few trees in it but sometimes a seed tree harvest can look uh, basically like a clear cut and if you look closely there'll be just one or two really big trees standing out there um, Often it is essentially a clear cut where we leave three to five large seed trees to produce kind of the next generation of trees down there in that disturbed area. Um, it can be the final phase in a shelter wood harvest. Um, it has a lot of benefits like a clear cut and now you're getting all that uh, lumber out in one disturbance. Um, but also uh, those seed trees, if you look there, are at really high risk of blowing over in the wind. You think about it, these trees grow in the woods, the wind is broken by all the other trees around them, so they do pretty well. They can be really tall and top heavy if they grow in the woods, uh, but once you remove all the other trees around them, all of a sudden they are really susceptible to wind throw. A big windstorm could come by and blow a lot of those big seed trees over. And then from a forester's perspective, you've left this really big valuable tree standing there and then to only have it get blown over and killed uh, and you don't get any commercial value out of it, it's kind of a lose-lose uh, for both the tree and the forester when that kind of thing happens. So you got to pay close attention to that. Um, this is an interesting one that you don't see a whole lot and it's hard to see from the road, but group selection is a really interesting one. It's maybe one of my favorites from a wildlife habitat perspective. Here we're going to do multiple small scale clear cuts over the course of like 40 or 50 years until the whole stand has been cut over. Uh, and the size of the opening can be, you know, determined by the, what types of trees you want to come back. If we use a small opening, we could have shade tolerant trees like pines come up. If we cut bigger openings, we're going to get sun loving trees like aspens and birches that come up. Um, and these small clearings really mimic natural disturbance really well. They mimic, you know, beavers um, creating a, a meadow in the forest or they create, they, um, they mimic a microburst or, or, or a tornado or a small forest fire really, really well. The, the kind of disturbances that would have happened prior to man showing up in Maine, honestly, smaller areas of disturbance. And then uh, disadvantages though, again, kind of like that shade tree uh, harvest, you're going to have to come back more often and disturb it over and over again. But you can create some really great wildlife habitat by creating all these little pockets of disturbance in the forest where you have all these different age stands mixed together. There's a little bit of everything for everybody. You can get some great biodiversity out of that. And then our last one is becoming very, very popular nowadays. We see it all over the place. This would be called single tree selection or selective cut, you'll hear it called. This is where, you know, maybe there's one species of really valuable tree on your property. You're going to go in and select for that species or maybe the opposite. Maybe you're going to go in the first time and just cut out the non-valuable species and allow the, the more valuable trees to release and grow a little faster and uh, improve their canopies. Uh, there's all kinds of different things you can do here, but usually we're looking for one or two specific species in these kind of cuts. Um, when we look at this from Google Earth in a few minutes, you're going to see um, skitter trails going all through the woods every which way and the forest just kind of looking relatively thinned when they're done because they've gone in and selected out individual trees that they're looking for. Um, and in, in, this, in this method, we can kind of maintain this late successional feel with these big mature trees that are left. Um, 
and you can have a forest that continually produces lumber. There's some uh, landowners that I know really well that harvest their land uh, you know, every few years and, and make a little money off it through single tree selection. Um, and some of these late successional species, things like pileated woodpeckers and marten, can really rely on, on forest types like this. So you can still harvest your property, but keep that, that uh, habitat for some of the other creatures that require the bigger, older trees. Um, and then uh, disadvantages, you can do some damage to the other trees that you're leaving with the skitter, dragging logs out and things like that. And then you really only get shade tolerant trees that regenerate. You don't open it up enough to get those birches and aspens. If that's what you're looking for, it's tough to get that to come back really well if you're just doing little tiny single tree removal in the woods. So um, there you have it. We've got single tree, group selection, seed tree, and shelter wood and clear cuts. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause here in a second and I'm going to allow you guys to pause this video, go back to Google Classroom and open up your assignment for today. Uh, this is a Google Earth scavenger hunt we're going to do together and we're going to travel around and here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to have you watch this video and I'm going to show you all these different things and all I want you to do is screenshot uh, the images I'm showing you. Uh, and paste them into your assignment just to show me you followed along with the video today and saw these harvest types for yourself. So I'll uh, wait just a second for you to go into Google Classroom, grab that assignment, and then we'll get going. Okay, welcome back all you cool cats and kittens. Let's get going with our assignment today. Let's go to Google Earth. You're going to follow along with me. I'll tell you when to screenshot and what to do here. Um, let's open up Google Earth. Uh, there's a couple that I found right off the bat for you. So. Uh, I do a lot of deer hunting down east here uh, by this. This is called Nicotawas Lake. Uh, and this is some pretty wild country out here. A lot of logging roads. We can see already some, uh, some evidence of logging. But right off the bat, and the reason I'm coming here first is these ones are hard to find. If we look right here, do you see how that almost looks like crop circles in the woods? Like this perfect pattern of round uh, clearings. That is a classic example of group selection. Okay, so what I want you to do is screenshot that right there. Did you screenshot it? I hope you did. That's gonna be group selection. We can use that in our assignment there. And actually right along here, uh, we can see single tree selection as well, but we'll find some better ones of that. And oh, look at all these skitter trails going out through here with some single tree selection. Now, I went there on purpose. That can be hard to find. I knew right where that was, so I wanted to go there. Look at, look at all the examples of cutting out here. I think, oh, um, this is a really good one here. Let's, let's get shelter wood out of the way while we're here. Um, I'm going to show you a spot. I shouldn't show you this. This, I'm literally showing you one of my spots here, people. I should not be doing this, but, um, uh, in, earlier I mentioned that shelter wood harvest that we used to hunt in, and I, I guess it doesn't matter anymore because they've cut it since then. But right here, if we zoom in on this, it's hard to tell, but if you look closely, you can see how much canopy is left in the woods. You can see the skitter trails pretty clearly, but there's a ton of canopy left in the woods there. Um, and if you walk around in there, it, it, this, it's grown up a lot since this picture was taken, but that's a pretty classic example of shelter wood. So I'm gonna pause right here, and I'm gonna allow you to take a screenshot of that, and you'll know um, shelter wood for your assignment. So I'll pause now. Okay, hopefully you took a screenshot there, and you can use that for your shelter wood uh, section of the assignment. So we've got three more to go here. Let's go to the Allagash. Oh near and dear to my heart, one of my favorite places on earth. We're going to northwestern Maine, the North Maine woods. Uh, we're going to the Allagash region here. Holy cow. And basically anywhere you plop down here in the Allagash, it starts to become obvious. You can start to see this is a really wild place, but there is a human footprint everywhere you look. Like, like you can see how cut over this hillside is here. Uh, we can tell it's all hardwood because it's turning nice and yellow in the fall. It's probably all beeches and yellow birch in there, which is very common up in that region. Um, but if we if we allow this to, to load up here, I mean, right off the bat, there's an easy one. Check out that clear cut, right? Uh, if we let this load up and clear out, if I look, boom, that's a classic clear cut. There are no trees left there. They have cut every single tree. So we'll call that a clear cut. And I'll let you guys take a screenshot of that now. Okay, hopefully you got a, screen, a screenshot there. If I scroll over, here's an older clear cut that's been planted to probably spruce, and you can see all those young spruce growing out there. They'll come over and they'll spray this with herbicide every every you know 
every so often to keep the broadleaf trees from coming back until it turns into a pure stand of spruce. And there you go, there's a huge old clear cut that's been all planted to spruce. That's an older one, but there's a really fresh clear cut right there. Uh, if we come through here, this is, this is almost certainly, do you see how perfectly straight all those skitter trails are through the woods? This is almost certainly single tree selection. If I look, uh, you can see there's a ton of canopy left. They've gone through and absolutely cut a whole bunch of trees out of there, but they've left a ton of them. They were going through looking for some sort of particular tree as they were going through there, whatever uh, was highly valuable for the market at that time, probably. If we zoom in, I'll let you get a screenshot right in there of single tree selection. You can see how much canopy is left in there. Okay, hopefully you got your screenshot there of single tree selection. Now the last one we need to find is a seed tree cut, I believe. We've done everything. What have we, we've done clear cut, we've done uh, shelter wood, group selection, single tree, uh, and then our last one is gonna be a seed tree. Seed tree from above is gonna look a lot like a clear cut, um, but if we look close and we let it load up, we will see larger trees standing in the clear cut. I mean, this looks like just a true clear cut to me. I don't see any large trees there. So let's let's roll around here and look in some other places. Let's come over here, just see what we get. There we go. Let's check this one, pretty fresh. There's the west branch of Ben Glacier Brook. There you know, probably some brookies in there. Dunk some worms there, you know, like catch some trout, let it load up here. Oh, we, well, I don't know if I'm gonna call that a seed tree or not. Nope, okay, what about this one here? Here's a little trick they like to do. Oh yeah, see that island of trees they left right there in the middle? By acreage, when they do that, they can take this whole big honking chunk here and uh, they can say, well, you know what? Uh, we may have cleared out this huge area, but if you count up how many trees are left in that huge area, that makes it so it's technically not a clear cut, which is kind of weird seeming. But uh, there's one big honking tree standing in the middle there that uh, you can see the shadow it's casting. That would be an example of a seed tree, but we can find a better one. We can, we can do better, people. We can do better. Here we go. Is this going to be a good one? Uh, I don't know. We'll find one. We'll find a seed tree. Let's see, this one's looking promising. We wanna find big trees standing out in that thing. Let's see. That one there, nope. Let's see, here we go. Nope, more clear cut. Oh, actually, you know what? I see some big honking trees standing out in there. There we go, they're casting some shadows. What I'm gonna do is zoom in right there and we'll call that a seed tree harvest. You can see that it's been clear cut, they've removed all the trees, but they've left a handful of those bigger, taller trees that are casting a shadow there. So let's call that seed tree for now. Uh, there's some better ones we could have found, but I don't wanna make you guys wait forever here. Um, and I encourage you, hop on Google Earth if you want, go around and look at all these harvest types in northern Maine, it's pretty amazing how much of a human footprint there is on the landscape because of forestry. So hopefully you've got your screenshot of seed tree. You can take those five screenshots and plug them into your assignment today and make sure you submit that. I really appreciate you tuning in and working hard with me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys.